Hello friends, um, in my last video I created um, a YAML based Azure DevOps uh, CD pipeline and I think it's pretty cool but uh, today I'm going to go one step further because though this pipeline from the last video, check it out in the links here, this pipeline was not you know um, the best outcome for several reasons i explain why so today i'm going to dive into it so without further ado let's do it so as you might see here i'm in my azure devops and uh, by the way um, i decided to no longer put my face into the view here uh, because i don't know it's pretty interesting uh, i I don't think it's pretty interesting. So from this video on, I will make my recorded videos without my face in the way because I think it's too narcissistic <laughs> to do it. Anyway, um, so here is our Azure DevOps. Just to remind you guys, um, I have two pipelines. I decided to split it into two pipelines last time. So what we're gonna see is a CI pipeline which gets triggered automatically every time a pull request is made to the dev branch or ma main branch, I think. Um, and the CD pipeline kind of was uh, created to trigger after this. So just to remind ourselves, how do we do it? This is the CI pipeline. I'm currently thinking about um, putting this to the Azure DevOps folder too, because they kind of should stick together in one place. The default location um, to remember you is to put it in the root directory so that Azure DevOps can find it automatically. But I think um, I should improve on this. Maybe I'll make another video about this. Then we have here this CD pipeline, which I called Azure release for whatever reason. And now this is <coughs> kind of cool, it works. <clears throat> it is referencing the CI pipeline. So it gets triggered by the CI pipeline and uh, it has some variables here um, in order for us to be able to not put everything here in the bottom all the time. But the problem now is with this pipeline, we have several stages running like integration and test in this scenario, it could be production and whatever. And what this basically is, it basically is always a copy of each other. So that means if we want to change something inside of the pipeline regularly, uh, every stage, every environment um, is kind of the same. So um, we need to change it on different places and this kind of sucks. So this is why I want to improve on this and use something which is called templates. So templates is pretty cool. All you need to do in the first step is to add uh, a new file here, which we will call uh, stage template or whatever. Let's call it stage template YAML, doesn't matter. So, <clears throat> and uh, what you now have here is that you can kind of put the complete stuff out of your stages into this template. So what we're gonna do in order to do this, it's not, you know, you're not copying out all of it. You just copy out the job section. So let's do it. Let's copy out the job section here from one of my st stages and put it in here. So this was clear that he messes up my indention. Always the same. Can I see? So this should be fine here. Now it's indented. Okay. Um, now the problem is that this template should get executed uh, by each of the stages. But now because it is stages, uh, some of the values here could not be hard coded into the template. They must come from outside, from the pipeline itself. So this is where a new thing comes in, which is called the parameters, which is a concept you know from other stuff too, like bicep templates has parameters, um, I don't know, PowerShell scripts, whatever comes from outside needs to go into a parameter. So one obvious parameter, if we look here, is the environment here. So the name of the environment in Azure DevOps, let me show you. I mean, this one, come on, why it's so slow today? Let me have a coffee. Mm -hmm. Here you go. If you watch my other video, you will see that one thing is that you define environments representing your stages in Azure DevOps. Okay, cool. 
So, but now we cannot leave it as it is because this thing now says it always will use integration, which is not what we want to do. We, the purpose of the template is to be applied to different environments. So what we simply can do here is that we add a new parameter and we name it, um, I don't know, environment. Okay. And then we give it a type of string. And what we also could do is we could define uh, valid values, which is pretty interesting here in this case, so that not every string can be passed in. Let me zoom a little bit maybe here on this. Not every string can be passed in, but only certain strings we define. So we do this in YAML like this, integration, and we know another one, test. So basically those strings must be represented here. Okay, cool. What we also could do, we could define additionally a default value, which is simply this. So if somebody misses out um, the, no, I think it can be here. If, if somebody misses it, we could say use integration if it's not given, but we won't do it here. Okay, now with this in place, we need to apply this parameter. We need to inject it on the correct um, location. So in this case, integration needs to be replaced. So we do it by remove integration here. And then we just have this uh, syntax. I'm not sure what the name of the syntax is. I think it's mustache, but don't uh, quote me on this. Um, so and now you can do parameters dot and then the name you choose dot environment. So this means on this uh, special um, position, it will get injected. Okay. Next thing, what we see here is a VM image name. In our original template, uh, in our original YAML file, this was a variable. But um, templates cannot have variables. That's an important concept. Each uh, variable needs to be a parameter. But, you know, wait a minute. That's not true, to be honest. Uh, they can have variables, I think, but it makes no sense because the in this case, the YAML um, file should control which VM image should be used. So what we do here is we add another one and we call it VM image. It's type string too. Uh, it could be anything. We could add now what's uh, what's uh, possible, but um, I will stick to the default value, which is Ubuntu latest. This is the VM image thingy. So now I can go here and say, you know what? Use VM image here. And basically that's what you do. Let me do this uh, together with you. Let's check. Okay, we have to download um, the artifact from the CI pipeline, that's always the same thing. Okay, then we need to install the bicep modules here, but now something interesting, uh, no, this is basically the same, but now when we deploy, deploy our bicep, now we need to be very careful because here we have the service connection name, which is a variable, which we cannot use. So we add another one, which is, let me see, Something like this. Service connection name, which is a string, we needs to be passed. So I can take the parameter and tell him this is the parameter service connection name. Okay, nice. Another thing here is that now we have to pass an argument to this PowerShell script, which is executed. It's executing a PowerShell script and this PowerShell script by itself needs a parameter, but this is not the name of the stage. It's int, test and prod in my case. So I need another parameter, which is kind of like environment. Let me do it here for whatever reason. Uh, and this is stage short. This is a string and could be int and test in my case. And by the way, if it would be production, it would name the environment production, if I would have a production stage here, but my short name would be prod. So this is why I have this parameter in place. Let me copy out this. 
and let me put in this here. So this was stage short. Okay, so and up to this point, we replaced everything I think which is uh, important. So now service connection name kind of occurs several times this variable. And I think I can replace this automatically with what did I do? I don't know. I so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm telling him, let me zoom, replace every occurrence of this former variable use by now the parameter syntax. Do this in this file. There are several of them. And now I have service connection name in place. Nice. Another thing is the state short thingy. And the state short thingy um, is now needed at several points. So you can see here, for instance, my uh, web app is named ui-dd-project. Oh, wait a minute. Project is another parameter. So I need to go here and add parameter project name. So, and now what I need to do is I need to build up this thing by using project name and then state short. Okay, nice. So basically I can use this and then I can go wherever I have this combination. I can replace it with this thing. So replace every dollar project dash end with this thing. Should be fine. Nice. So let me see. I have this in place. I have that. And we will see if this is, I'm just thinking currently by during making this video, if this could be a variable too. Let's see. So now we have everything replaced here. It looks nice. Check the slot health. Stage is int. No, it's not. Stage is, please, stage short here. Okay, replace the two. And then we have a slot uh, replacement, which is deploy slot as a fixed value. This is nice. Should work pretty fine. So let's see if we uh, can use variables. I'm not sure. Let's see, is variables, uh, oh, maybe we do this later when, when this is working. Okay, now I think my template is uh, pretty much uh, done. Let me split here a little bit, split right and replace this. Now on the left side, I have my Azure release YAML file and on the right side, I have my new template. Okay, this is important because we will need to reference those variable names, as you see in a minute. So as you saw, I took all of this, right, the stage thing. So the jobs thing. So what I do here, I'm going here and telling him, no, you know what, I'm not going to define this here anymore. So let's remove this whole thing. But instead, I'm going to use a template, which you will find in the file, this directory, please. And then just stage dash template YAML. This is where you find it. But in order to use it, you need to pass in parameters here. And now it's a key value pair. So that means what we do is uh, VM image is dollar VM image name. So we use our variable here. So then the next thing is in our thing environment, this is um, integration at this point. Let me, I hope um, it's not getting too much in the way. But anyway, this is, you know this from your own. So then the next thing is state short. Okay, state short will be int. And uh, then service connection name will be, I think it is dollar service connection name. This one. Okay. 
And I think project name will be just project. So dollar project. Here you can see another pretty important concept as at least I think it's important, naming. So I'm naming parameters in this file with this uppercase and then um, let's say Hungarian syntax. I think that's what it's called. But I'm using a uh, kennel case on my local variables. And this way I can easily um, decide what is what. So that's what I do reg on a regular base. So because now I have everything in place here, I can just simply replace the old test stage, which was pretty nice, uh, pretty, pretty big by saying test is test. And now it's easy. You see, it is, uh, what's going on? Oh, he's not replacing it. If I'm replacing it, we just do code, it's getting in my way, sorry. So test again, the same template, the same image name, but now the environment will be test again. The short name is test two. service connection and project is the same. So that's it, basically. That's what you do. But see now what the uh, advantages are. So let me compare my pull request. So the release YAML now is a lot of red here. So a lot of deletions. It's uh, obvious that this new release YAML looks better than the old one. And the best thing of all is now this new file contains all the hard logic, all the hard stuff in double quotes hard. Um, it just simply contains our pipeline or CD logic. And the best thing of all, if you as a company are going to, or even private, Lee, if you are going to do basically the same over and over again, which is uh, the case in my company, we are basically we are deploying the same uh, infrastructure in Azure, but uh, you know, with different names. So we could put in something like parameters for this too here. Let's see if we can later improve for DD or whatever it is. And then um, we would be able to reuse this template in different pipelines. Um, and all what's left for the pipeline, or oh, sorry, is uh, basically this. So it fits on one page, even in this zoom level. This is what you want end up with. So uh, putting in a new stage is just simply copying out this few lines and uh, replacing some stuff. That's it. Okay, let's try out if it works. So um, using um, template for CD or whatever. I'm on the demo branch. Commit and push this. So let's go over. And now let's go to my branches. That's one way to do it. I have demo and main. And now let's create a pull request from demo to main. And uh, let's call it um, using templates now. Bad pull request, but anyway. Uh, let's see, it runs the CI pipeline. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And I will now again, wait for this pipeline to finish. And hopefully this pipeline to start and then I will continue the recording. So see you in a minute. So the, the stages ran through. Um, so it is um, now demo CI, the CI build ran through and it automatically triggered the CD build as intended. The CD build went to the stage uh, and it's now integration is now waiting for me to approve it on the uh, test stage. But you know, this is uh, just simply the same as in the last video. So I'm not covering here many details. It looks the same because the steps are the same, but now they're coming from our template. And um, this is what we wanted to achieve. And with that, I'm gonna end this video. I highly uh, recommend that uh, you guys are using this if you are switching to YAML pipelines, because it's for obvious reasons, it's far better than putting all in one file. And um, the, the main uh, benefit of this is actually when you come up with a template which is, um, uh, which is clear and uh, then you change it. But let me do a last thing. I just remember, let me do a last thing and uh, go over to 
uh, using variables. Maybe let's check this. I just remember that I wanted to showcase if we can uh, get even better by using variables. So let me look into my template. So I'm using what I what I'm up to is I'm using all over the place this thing. So can I replace this with a variable? So let me um, think of this. So uh, in the default thing, uh, variables are defined as um, um, what was it? Um, is it variables? I'm not even sure. Is this valid? So this is, let's call this name is and then value, I think. This is how we could do it. I'm not sure I will cover it. So this will be, um, let's call it our suffix variable. Can I use the suffix now? Let's say I'm using this and I'm replacing all occurrences by this syntax. So now I want to inject a variable inside of my stage template. So let's do this. Um, I did it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I'm using suffix instead of this. Interesting. Let's see. Um, using or implementing suffix var in template. So let's see, because when I push, he should automatically re-trigger the pipelines. He does. So uh, demo CI now should run in a second using templates now, yes. And let's see if this uh, gets used. I will pause the video and then we come back. Hmm. I um, uh, checked it out by uh, simply doing this one. Uh, go to the pipeline, the CD pipeline, and try to run the pipeline using it's even faster the demo um, thingy. And he tells you, no, 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 I cannot. So uh, unexpected value variables here in the template. Let's see. Um, oh, I messed up here a little bit. So he, the replacement just replaced everything. But I think he's not expecting variables inside of a template. So, but anyways, let me see, um, try. Uh, and let me do maybe another run. Just go to the CD pipeline, run the pipeline with the current demo thingy. And he still says unexpected um, variables. Mm, I don't know exactly. Maybe it needs to go First, no, I don't think so. I don't think order is a thing, but you know, order try. Maybe it's uh, just simply not possible. Let me refresh the page and then go to the CD pipeline, run the pipeline with demo. This is a nice way to debug your pipeline without waiting for the CD. No, he's not doing it. So basically what this is saying that this is not going to work. Let me undo it. Let me replace all of them. So I don't think, I don't know if this is even possible um, uh, to do. Undoing the bars in template. So commit and push. So I don't know, I have to investigate here. Maybe if somebody of you knows the solution, just put it in the commands. Um, but anyway, uh, now I can conclude that still, even without variables, it's a good thing. There is, just to point out the way to put all your variables into a shared YAML file. And then you can use this YAML file to reference variables. So this would lead to the point that you don't need to actually um, put in, let's say, the um, uh, service connection um, into uh, every, um, every parameter. Uh, but anyways, uh, I think it's, it's um, doable this way too. I hope this helped and um, looking forward to your feedback. And I will come up with more content on this probably in the next time. See you.